Hey everyone, <laughs> hope all is well with you and yours. I want to talk about the heart today. Let's talk about the heart. There are some things that are in our heart that the Holy Spirit wants to address. Matthew 5 and 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Our hearts before God is very important, and God does care about the things that are hiding in our heart. Before we go any further, let me read the book of Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm going to start at verse 5 and read down to verse 10. And in your own time, you can read the whole chapter. There's some good things in that chapter. <laughs> but let's start here. He was talking to the children of Judah, the people of God, the children of Israel. They were God's people at that time, right? But now we are God's people, right? Now we are the church. So we are God's people. So this can apply to us as well because God saw the condition of the people, of the inhabitants of that land, his people. He saw where their hearts were. And he talked about how their hearts turned away from him. So let's see what he's saying uh, through the prophet Jeremiah who had to speak this uh, to the children of Israel. He says in verse five, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. And I'm reading in the English Standard Version. Whose heart turns away from the Lord. Let me read that again. Thus says the Lord. So who received the message from the Lord? The utterance from the Lord. It was Jeremiah the prophet. So he spoke to the children of Judah. Jerusalem. He says, thus says the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying to them. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man in verse 7. But here's a contrast, right? He talked about cursed is the man who puts his trust in man, right? So now look at the contrast. So now there was cursings that came to men who trust in men. So then in verse 7, the contrast to that is blessed is the man who trusts the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful. I want you to hone in on verse nine. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick and other versions say desperately wicked. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Jeremiah says to the people of God, the heart above all is deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can understand it? And then God says, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. So it is the Lord that is searching our hearts right now, even as I speak. Let me say this to you and I. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks to our heart in regards to what God is seeing. God wants us to pay attention to our lives. God wants us to pay attention to what is in our heart. Now, what could be in our heart? It could be lust for things. It could be unforgiveness. It could be resentment. It could be bitterness. It could be jealousy. It could be envy. It could be hate. It could be uh, pride. It could be so many things that are found. Deceit, deception can be all found in the heart. When you see people and their behavior, right? And we, we look at the news <laughs> all day long. Well, not, well I'm not gonna say all day long, but the news is playing just about all day long. You see the wickedness that's going on in our world today. Well, something is going in, going on in the heart of man, and it's called wickedness. It's called unrighteousness. 
it's, it's called uh, immorality, right? It's called sin. But we know that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we know that those that are born again, you and I that are born again, we know we have God's spirit. So we no longer um, in judgment. You know, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we escaped the judgment of death, spiritual death, because we have accepted the invitation that God gave to the whole world through his son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So thank God that we're born again. But then there are things that we're still battling with, right? Because we still have the earthly nature. We're still contending. That's why the Bible was written too as well for what? Our instruction. The Bible talks about instruction in righteousness. We don't know what's right in our own eyes. So surely we need God to show us that which is good and that which is evil. And as believers, we want to cling to the things that are good. And even now in the world that we live in, we get contaminated with the things that are in the world. Some of us, all of us get plugged in in one way or the other into the things of this world. And the enemy sure makes sure that he tries to distract the Christian, right? Because he already have the he already has the world, right? With Christians, he tries to distract us, to allure us away from God, because he knows if he can remove us from that place of influence and safety with God, with God, John 10 and 10 says that he can still kill and destroy, right? Um, but Jesus Christ has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So it's important that even though we do missions for God, sometimes we, we can be easily deceived, guys, because we can be doing a great work for the Lord. We can be doing missions and outreach and exercising our gifts and serving Him and doing all the things that He's called us to do and told us to do. And some of us, um, you know, we go out and we feed the homeless and we preach the gospel and we disciple others, right? And then in that time that we do that, if, we, if we're not careful, if we don't take the time to retreat every day to spend time with the Lord in prayer and study of his word and worship, um, giving attention to the Lord, giving focus to scripture, giving focus to what God is saying, like Mary did in the Gospel of Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, Mary gave attention to the Lord. She set her mind on the realities of heaven and not just on earthly things, as Paul had encouraged the church at Colossae. He said, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. He said, set your affection, set your focus, set your mind on things above and not on the things of this earth. For you are dead and your life is hid in God through Christ. And he said, and when Christ shall appear, then you shall appear also with him in glory. So God wants us to set our affections and the re, our, rea the real our realities on things that are above. So, because he knows that if we don't keep our focus there, things can come in to distract us. And we won't have that single heart, you know, that heart that is undivided, that devotion that is um, uh, constant and consistent and cannot be shaken. So that's why Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 5 and 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. There's a seeking of God, seeking his face, seeking God, pursuing God, pursuing his righteousness, because the body of Christ, we need to be clean. God didn't save us for us to continue to live the to live life the way that we used to. He purged us from our sins. He purged us from our old lives. So now there's a newness of life that we're supposed to walk into. There's a transformation that we're supposed to come into. There's a spiritual maturity that we're supposed to come into. He wants us to do a check. He tells us to examine ourselves in the Lord. And you know what? We can't do it on our own. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to show us in what way our lives are wrong. The Holy Spirit is the anointing of God. 
He's the enabling power of God. He's the one that brought us into adoption as sons and daughters of God. So he's our helper. He's our advocate. He's our intercessor. He's our teacher. He reveals Jesus, right? So it's important that we understand that every day there should be a self-examination. We should never think because we have works that we are okay with God. Remember what Jeremiah said in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17? He said, the heart above all is deceitful, desperately wicked, who can know it? So we need the help of the Lord because the next verse says, I, the Lord, the Lord is speaking. He said, I test the heart and try the reins. So the only person that can adequately test and examine our hearts and show us what's there is God. Now, we do see things that are in our heart at times through our behavior, but we can't see it to the extent that God can see it because, like I said, things can blind us, not just uh, bad character or conduct, but just even our works. We can get so caught up in working for the Lord that there's less time with uh, that one-on-one -on -one time with God. And then things begin to what corrode. Things begin to, the flesh begins to um, rise up in our lives again because we haven't given attention to reading of scripture or, or praying and studying and spending time with God. But things can get there and God wants us to be clean. Now look at what David said in Psalm 139. In Psalm 139, here is a man after God's own heart. And let me say this, <laughs> David wasn't perfect, was he? He sinned against God, and he did things that were not right and acceptable to God. But he, yet he was a man after God's own heart. But here we see that David didn't give up. He still continued in his uh, pursuit of God. So you get Psalm 51, right? <laughs> Psalm 51, David begins to, re to uh, be sorrowful, that godly sorrow. He begins to repent. He begins to pour out his heart. He begins to ask the Lord to have mercy on him. He humbled himself and he sought the Lord for forgiveness. So even when we do sin, of course, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus, who forgives us. The Bible says not only does he forgive us, but he cleanses us from all of our sins. But every day we should seek the Lord. Uh, part of our prayer should be asking the Lord to forgive us of our sins. What are, what are we asking the Lord to forgive us about? Yeah, there are things that we cannot see, but we should be seeking the Lord so the Lord can reveal to us those areas that need to be cleaned up. And we do need the help of the Holy Spirit because if you try to do it in your own strength, it will not work. <laughs> the only power that we have to overcome these ungodly, earthly, fleshly desires is the Holy Spirit and the presence of God. So I just want to read what David said. He said in Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24, he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. In some versions it says, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Are we praying that? Are we asking the Lord to show us what way in us is wicked? He said, show me in which way uh, my life is wrong. Show me if there's any wicked way in me. But he asked the Lord, key thing, search me, oh God. That was his prayer. We have to make that our prayer every day because we can be deceived. I don't want to be deceived in this last hour. Pride can deceive me. Like the Pharisee in the story, in the parable that Jesus told his disciples, there was a parable of um, the Pharisee and the publican, right? In Luke chapter 18. And the Pharisee stood uh, within himself he thought himself to be righteous, and he even looked down on others. He said, Lord, I fast twice in the week, and I pray, and I give a tenth of all that I possess, and I thank you, God, that I'm not like these other people, especially this, this publican right over here. You mean to tell me that he was in the presence of God, 
in the temple praying to God that he did not take that time to examine himself. <laughs> but God was doing some examining, wasn't he? He was examining him because the Bible says that the publican said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said in the story that that man was justified in his doing. So when he left that place of prayer, that altar <laughs> that he made between him and God, he was justified. But the Pharisee wasn't justified. But we can look at such individuals and say, oh, look at what they're doing for God. But we don't know their heart like God knows their heart. And fruit is everything. Because what came out of the Pharisee's mouth, something was wrong. Something was rotten. Something was wicked within this Pharisee in the story. His heart wasn't right before God. So let that be, I know for me and myself, let that be a warning and a caution. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think soberly. I think that's Romans chapter 12, verse three. So important that we stay sober and that we understand our, um, that we are inclined, even as being born again children, we're still inclined to do the thing <laughs> that we shouldn't do. Didn't the Apostle Paul said, said in Galatians 5, 16 and 17, walk in the spirit so you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and they're contrary one to the other so we will not do the things that we want to do right it's a struggle sometimes doing the right thing but with god all things are possible with the holy spirit we can overcome and with having the Holy Spirit, we got to connect to the Holy Spirit. We got to grow in the Holy Spirit. And that's where John 15 comes in. The true vine. John 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. We got to stay connected to Christ. And we, got not, we have to abide in him and remain in him. We got to cling to him and seek him and pursue him. First of all, in prayer. We give our attention to the Lord in his word and communion with him. We're sitting and listening to his word. It's very important that we position ourselves to hear the word of God, to listen to his teaching like Mary did. And the church is really important. So you have to, you have to be a part of a community, a church that is like the book of Acts. If you want to see what a church is supposed to be, Read the, the, read the entire book of Acts chapter 2. And even read the Gospels and the letters and the epistles in the New Testament. You'll see what a church is supposed to do and be like. And we're supposed to look like Christ <laughs> because we have the mind of Christ. We do. And this is why it's important that we fellowship with God daily. That we stay in the confinements of his will. And being part of a church is so important because when we are in a community, our brothers and sisters um, help us. When we're under the word of God, it all shows us where we are, the things that we need to work on. Sometimes we don't know that we have jealousy. Sometimes we don't know that we have envy. Sometimes we think, oh, I forgive everyone. But then you treat people partial, you know? So we got to check all those things that are in our heart. And the thing I love about Jesus is that when he comes to commune with us and sup with us, it's not always good things. He wants to show us in in what way we need to clean our lives up because he is a heavenly father that loves us. He wants fellowship with us. He wants us to experience him. We are the bride of Christ. Then the Bible says that he, he wants to prepare us, the bride of Christ without spot and blemish, that he wants to, us to be pure even as he is pure. We're not perfect, but we have the person of the Holy Spirit that helps us in this sanctification process, this process of cleansing and washing. And we have to separate ourselves from the things that are filthy and ungodly, the things that God tells us to stay separate from. That's important because in his word, God gives us instruction too. 
So when we have that fellowship and that time with the Lord and we having such a good time and in his presence and we're singing and we're reading, we must understand too that there is an instruction that God gives us on how to live before him too as well. So when we have that that communion and that sweet communion and, and we're in God's presence and we're enjoying the Lord because we love him and we're spending time with him. We need to have our ears open and our hearts open to hear the word of God. That's what prayer does when we're doing it the correct way. Prayer positions us to hear God correctly so that he can open our heart so that we can hear more instruction, more teaching, that he can show us the things that we need to work on because he wants us close to him. Now, I wanna close off on this. When you have opportunity, read the book of Revelations chapter one, two, and three. Jesus desires fellowship with the church. Yes, he does. And in the churches of Asia Minor, there were seven churches that uh, Jesus instructed John the Apostle to write. He said, write to the seven churches in Asia Minor. And these are the things that I want you to write. And some, in five of those churches, he had some things that he had to deal with, right? What I love about, <laughs> what I love about Jesus is that when he spoke to each church, I noticed that he commended them on some things that they were doing that were good much like our children. You know, when we have that sit down with our children, when we tell our children, hey, look, I, we need to meet, we need to talk. And you know how when we sit down with our children, we kind of lay out, hey, you know, all the good things that we see that they're doing, because we don't want to just come off and saying, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, and this, we kind of come off with, hey, these are the things that you're doing good, and we're proud of you, but, and then we begin to talk about the, our concerns and we begin to talk about the things that we see uh, that they need to work on some, um, some concerns, you know, uh, choices that they're making. We begin to talk to them about how they need to tighten up some things and clean up some things. And so that's what Jesus was doing with these churches. He began to commend them about their works and um, their faithfulness and their perseverance. But then he said, I have somewhat against you. And that's the thing that I want to close off with. Although God sees a lot of good things about us as his sons and daughters of God, there, there are things that still need to be, there are things that still need to be cleaned up in our hearts. But God can't show us without communion because remember in Revelations 3 and 20, he tells the church, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and sup with him and he with me. And in verse 19, he said, whom the Lord loves, he rebukes and chastens. He said, be zealous therefore and repent. So when Jesus comes to us, when he shows us the areas of our lives that's not right before him, when he shows us how if we don't get certain things together, he's going to judge these areas. We won't be close to him. He told some of the, I'm going to remove my candlestick. I'm going to remove my presence from this, from this church. He's saying, repent and turn to me or return to me. Remember, we remember we read in Jeremiah 17, where he says, because you have turned your hearts from the Lord. We got to turn our hearts to the Lord in this last hour. But so amazing that Jesus wants to commune with you and I. And not just to tell us that he loves us because he told, he said in Revelations uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3, as you read, you can see the love that Jesus had or has for the church. But he wants to wash us and cleanse us. But he needs our help, right? We have our part. He does the washing. He does the cleansing. He does the purging. But our part is to abide in him. Our part is to remain in him. Our part is to turn to him. When our hearts turn from him, he wants us to repent and turn to him. So today and every day, when you pray and get before the Lord, 
do like David did and said, search me, O God, and know my heart and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me, Lord, and lead me into the way of everlasting. Lord, show me my ways. I don't think that I have unforgiveness. I don't think that I have jealousy or envy or hate or pride or strife or what. I don't think I have these things. Maybe some. Maybe sometimes we are know-it-alls. We think we know everything. <laughs> maybe our issue is with, that we lack humility or self. We lack self-control. Whatever it is, the things that are in our heart. Maybe we don't want nobody telling us what to do. Maybe we think we have a in our own mind. We we have a way that we think it's right. Whatever it is that's in our heart, we have lust for things. You know, whatever it is, ask the Lord to show you. And I'm going to continue to ask the Lord to show me my grievous ways, those things that grieve the Lord about me. He loves me. And yes, we're growing in the Lord, but sometimes our growth spiritually can be stunted when we are deceived and we don't see where we really are. Like the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, he thought he was just up here and riding high and didn't even know that the Lord was rejecting his 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 prayer his sacrifice his offerings he didn't even know that when he left he wasn't justified do you want to be that deceived i know i don't i'm and my prayer is lord please don't ever ever let me be deceived about what's going on in this heart and let me tell you there are times when i thought things that i thought things were not in my heart and god began to <laughs> He began to turn on that light and he began to show me I have somewhat against you. And he began to share with me. And over the course of your walk with God, he's going to share with you if you open your heart to him. If you seek God in prayer every day and don't uh, dismiss the fact that we are, we are but dust. <laughs> we have God's spirit. We have this treasure in earth and vessels, but we need God. We can't do it on our own. And that's the humility that David had. He said, I am poor and I am needy. He was king. He played the harp. He played instruments. He was a mighty warrior. All the things that David was. <laughs> but he said, I'm poor and needy. The king, that's what he said. Do you have that kind of attitude towards God? That humility? Do you depend on God like that? I'm going to come before you, Lord, and I want you to show me in what way my life is wrong. And when I see it, I'm going to ask you to help me, Lord. I was thinking about that commercial. You know how that commercial says, uh, what's in your wallet? Well, I want to say to you today, what is in your heart? You know what we have in our wallets is very important. And all of us know what's in our wallets, don't we? We carry it with us. At any given time, somebody can uh, steal from us or rob for us. We want to know because the fi because what's in our wallet ties into our finances, right? So we know what's in our wallet at all times. So what's in your wallet? But I wanted to say to you and I, what's in your heart? We can't continue to carry things in our heart and hold on to things in our heart that God wants to remove. And then I want to say this. Don't be surprised when you stop praying, asking God, to show you yourself. He's going to show you things that you were not that you were not aware of. You're going to be like, "Oh my god. I did not know I was operating that way. I didn't know. I, I know I saw it in my behavior uh, that I was irritated or I was frustrated or I was annoyed or I treated this person person differently or uh, my temper temperament wasn't so good. I recognized those things." but I didn't really see the root of it. You know what I mean? Um, the way we entreat our sister or entreat our brothers, we see that, hey, I didn't mean to be that way. Why, why am I so irritated? Why, why am I rubbed the wrong way by this person? Or um, why do I lack this, uh, lack uh, self-control? And uh, why don't I have love like I should? Why do I treat people certain? All these things, why am I so selfish? But we, we kind of see that we can be that way and we're like, okay, um, that wasn't good. But then peeling back the layers to see what is the root of that. And the root of that is what lies in the heart. 
because Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what lies in the heart? Strife, contention, bitterness, unforgiveness, hate, resentment, lust for things. And the list goes on and on and on. But I want to say this. You and I and all of us, we have things that we're still working out with the Lord. But don't be deceived. That is the thing that I wanted to share with you guys. Don't be deceived. Ask the Lord daily to search your heart. And because he already sees it, he tests, he knows it. You want to be, you want to experience God. You want to experience the presence of God. You don't want to be limited in how, in how God manifests himself to you. Because there are things that are lingering in your heart. God wants to, God wants us to address those things in our heart. So he can help us. So we can pull closer to him. And we can become clean because he's the purifying agent, right? So when we come close to God, when we see ourselves and we humble ourselves and we ask God to help us about the things that we see and we pull towards God, we seek God and pursue God, guess what he does, guys? He begins to bless us with his righteousness. He begins to cleanse our hearts and our hands become purified, right? So I just wanted to encourage all of us don't miss that daily fellowship with God. And don't miss asking God to show you where you are. And when he does, don't, don't, I know it's not comfortable, but don't, don't ignore it. Move closer to him. Let him help you so that you can see God. God bless you.